How do you go from the world's biggest creditor to an impending economic collapse? Well, China would know a thing or two. As its project of the century, the Belt Road Initiative is becoming a global ghost town, Beijing is running extremely low on cash. Not a very fitting end for a country that has earned its reputation for being a loan shark, right? The irony isn't lost on us. So what's going on with China's BRI partners defaulting? And how is its economy faring? Let's find out. Debt Diplomacy In the quest for financial power, China has built a tendency to bail out countries crushed under one economic crisis after another. Across the world, Xi Jinping has been acting as the messiah by providing small to medium scale bailouts, a post that traditionally the Western institutions hold. But this isn't the first time we're seeing debt diplomacy on a global level. Yep, rings a bell? It seems like Beijing has torn up a page from Washington's How to Become a Financial Superpower Handbook. There are a lot of parallels between China's emergence as a loan provider and the United States' consolidation as a global economic power. You know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the US wanted the world to become its permanent market as its industries flourished. But most of them were simply out of money. That's when the inception of strategic financial institutions like the IMF and the World Bank takes place. After the Latin American debt crisis of the 1980s, the US became the most significant source of a bailout for the distressed nation. And the rest is history. Yet, as we dig deeper into China's debt diplomacy, we'll see that perhaps Beijing isn't playing by all the rules. Washington has carved a history of exploitative terms of loans and China couldn't help but get a little more devious about it. Here's how. The BRI in the past decade, China has been busy lending massive amounts of loans to high-risk countries across the globe. Let it be Sub-Saharan Africa or South America, a substantial part of the world has signed a loan agreement with Beijing. Now, this phenomenon isn't something new. We've already seen the IMF bailing out countries in the past at the expense of hard and fast terms, such as increased inflation in the countries. While the Bretton Wood institutions work with the US as its biggest contributor, it isn't largely focused on one member state. It remains an organization that follows suit with its 190 members. This is where China sets itself apart. Its debt diplomacy is highly contingent on its mega development project that puts global infrastructure at the center of trade in the 21st century. You know we are talking about the One Belt, One Road Initiative, or BRI, that has become China's pet project to assume superpower. Under this initiative, Xi Jinping wants countries to join one singular network of trade routes that are backed by sustainable financial institutions. Again, we've seen this film before. Let's just say China's BRI is the high-budget remake of the post-World War II Marshall Plan. So it went like this. The US drilled almost $13.3 billion into war-torn Western economies so they could rebuild their economies and strike trade agreements with Washington. China is more or less doing the same, only this time it wants at least 150 countries to join the BRI as Beijing brings investments into their countries. And as Xi Jinping moves into new parts of the world, financial experts are concerned about the country's coveted terms of loans. China's debt trap So far, the CCP has kept the important details of the loans under the rug. Yeah, other than the personal liberties of its own citizens, China also doesn't seem to believe in financial transparency. What we know is that the country keeps some prized possessions as the debtor's liable assets, and those interest rates are off the chart. If that wasn't concerning enough, the repayment plans are as tight and short-termed as it gets. And if you look close enough, there's a pattern. Beijing has a record of offering bailouts to any country. It only goes for the countries that are at extremely high risks for investments and are standing on the brink of total economic collapse. It's just not a coincidence that these countries are extremely resource-rich as well or have some strategic geographical advantage. And when China steps in with seemingly lighter terms than the IMF, it's the knight in shining armor. But then everything falls apart. When Laos, a mineral-rich country, couldn't pay back China's loan, Beijing acquired its national electric grid system even when power cuts spiraled into major electricity debt. All things considered, any loan given under the BRI reeks of debt trap. It seems like China, like the US in the 1980s, is also roping for extreme political leverage as it moves towards a new world order. And now, in the biggest irony of all time, China's economy is dying under its huge trails of loans that never seem to get returned. 
So what's happening? Countries default. Back in 2017, China beat the IMF and World Bank to become the biggest creditor in the world. At the same time, Beijing was hoping that it would get all of its money back with an added gift of interest and some fast-paced developments for the BRI. Let's just say China played well out of its league and the shot didn't lend. Most countries can't pay up the loans. In fact, countries like Pakistan, Zambia and Sri Lanka are looking for more loans to pay back Beijing after they're well past their deadlines. And of course, China being China is effectively blocking all rescue loans that are mostly coming from the IMF. Today, more and more countries are asking for loan forgiveness, lower interest rates, plan restructuring and rescue loans, mainly because these countries are also defaulting in real time. From Sri Lanka to Argentina, high-risk countries are sinking into economic collapse and China's loans are scuttling them deeper. Well, when the CCP was carving BRI, its project of the century in 2013, it didn't see COVID-19 shutting down every country's industrial unit. The pandemic might be over, but the countries are still recovering from diminished GDPs, restructured markets and collapsing demand and price for their exports. To add serious insult to injury, Russia's war in Ukraine has put trade routes in extreme stress and let's just say the bustling buying and selling in the international market is quite low. Talk about your friends backstabbing you like that. Now China is reeling from economic loss. Is China's economy dying? It's simple. Almost all of the BRI exists on paper or Xi Jinping's dreams. Most of the projects in various countries were never completed due to economic crises. Yep, even high-risk countries were using loans to invest in development projects. The pandemic added to the delays too. Massive Chinese companies are involved in the global infrastructure projects and, well, they aren't getting any returns. So far, China's exposure to the collapse of the BRI project is around $1.3 trillion. If projects are abandoned or remain uncompleted, Beijing will suffer a major dent in its already shrinking economy. You see, the CCP put all of its eggs in one market. And as the demand for Chinese exports decreases, the country is finding it hard to compete with emerging markets in Southeast Asia. Back home, the situation isn't better either. China's local governments are under huge debt themselves. How the tables turn. After the provincial industrial units didn't yield any income for the local governments, they were forced to turn back to the central ruling party, the CCP. While Xi Jinping's administration bailed them out, its zero-COVID policy saw more and more quarantine labor and industries. The current decade was supposed to be the defining moment for the Chinese economy, as it was planning to profit from the One Belt, One Road initiative, yet the plan went down the drain. Even then, China was heavily invested in building infrastructure back home, simply to keep its construction firms under the illusion of making money. What really changed the gears was its homegrown property sector crisis. Hold on, because it gets worse. The state of China holds most of the land in the country that it sells to developers for real estate purposes. Companies like Evergrande Group were already facing turbulent times when the investments were all-time low. Delays in building housing projects, as well as failure to pay debt installments, had put the companies near a cash crunch. But when the demand for houses plummeted even more, there was no going back. Well, if you think about it, if people are forced to shut in their own homes and can't even get to their minimum wage job, they're not buying a new apartment on the block. The local governments had to step in to take control of the bankrupt property developers. That further escalated their demands for debt from the central government, leaving China severely low on cash and thin on foreign direct investments. And as more and more of its debtors default, we might be witnessing the fall of the economic messiah. Do you think the BRI is doomed to fail? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you soon.